Good evening, folks, and a hearty welcome to our drive-in theater. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you, one that will provide several hours of pleasurable relaxation and diversion for you and your family. Did you fail to dress up for tonight's show? No tie, an old shirt and slacks, a house dress? Well, don't give it a thought. We're glad you came as you are. We just want you to enjoy yourselves. Don't forget to visit our refreshment center during the intermission or any time. You love the tasty array of snacks we have to offer. So will the youngsters. Everything is quality and mm -hmm, so good. We hope you'll make this a weekly visit. Bring the family. Bring your friends. There are always wonderful new pictures to see, delightful snacks to nibble, a gay, pleasant evening for all. Oh, a word of caution. Don't drive over 10 miles an hour in the theater area for your safety's sake. And mom or pop, go with the kids when they leave the car. We hope you have a wonderful time. Come back soon. That's ridiculous. There's nothing to that story about a monster. I shall never forget that night when I found your grandfather down there on the path at the edge of the cliff after he'd met it so horribly mangled. as though I were a scared kid or a lunatic. I tell you, there's something horrible out there. Unless we destroy it, it'll destroy us. me without saying goodbye. No clues, no fingerprints, no motive, nothing. But surely if a man was choked to death, there would be imprints on his throat. Why in the world do you stay in this place? We can't leave. And now, on with the show. the century, when the age-old mystery of the Hammond monster was at last revealed to all England. That mystery, which although by 1900 had become a legend, was indeed a real tragedy and constant threat 
to the lives of all the seemingly doomed members of the House of Hammond. I beg your pardon, Miss Helga. I didn't mean to startle you. Oh, I must have fallen asleep. It's cold. Yes, it's a cold night, Miss Helga. I'll put on another log. Don't bother. It's 12 o'clock. I'm going to turn in. My brother come in yet? Not yet. He's very late. He and Dr. Colbert probably got to puttering about the laboratory and forgot the time. Don't worry. He'll be along directly. I was thinking those poachers might be up to their tricks on a night like this. Come on, Alex. Long past your bedtime. Uh, Charlie Tadpole was saying down in the village he owed Mr. Oliver one for that thrashing he gave him last week. What does he expect? Oliver caught him setting traps. Come on, Alex. Go on, old boy. with him. Sometimes dogs are smarter than folks. Oh, nonsense. He's just smart enough to prefer sleeping by the fire to the doghouse. Go on to bed now and behave yourself. Hurry up. How big and bright the stars look tonight. Aye, and there's frost on the ground too. It was just such a night when some madness... So that's what's worrying you. Don't be silly, Walton. I only hope Mr. Oliver doesn't take the shortcut back. That path by the edge of the cliff. Why shouldn't he? When stars are bright on a frosty night, beware thy bane on the rocky lane. Surely you don't put any stock in that old legend. It's only 20 years ago since your grandfather was killed. Grandfather killed himself. After he'd seen it. That's ridiculous. There's nothing to that story about a monster. Oh, I shall never forget that night when I found your grandfather down there on that path by the edge of the cliff. After he'd met it, so horribly mangled, and that insane look on his face. That's absurd. A supernatural creature going about killing and sending its victims mad. People don't believe in that sort of thing nowadays. I'm sorry to worry you, Miss Helga, but I do wish Mr. Oliver were home. All right, if it'll ease your mind, I'll ring up and see if he's left yet. Would you please get me south down, 236? Hello? Hello, Helga. Oliver? No, he left not more than two minutes ago. Yes, he said he was going straight home. That's all right. Oh, I say, Helga, how about a ride in the morning? <laughs> no, that's not professional advice, it's purely social. Fine, about ten? All right, I'll see you then. Good night. He just left. That make you feel better? Thank you, miss. It's probably a dog caught in a trap. That's no dog.
It's the monster killing Mr. Oliver, most like. Horrible, it were, like a dog. Get a hold of yourself, Will. Sounds like a lost soul. All right. Let's find out what it is. You're not going down there. Tell Strelick to ring the carriage round. Yes, Miss Strelick's got two bays on us. Very well. We'll have the gates open. Yes. Mrs. Walton, fetch me a coat. Don't stand there gaping as if you'd seen a ghost. But, Miss Helga, no Hammond ever ventures into the rocky lane on a frosty night. You've been doing your best to persuade me my brother's ventured down there. And if he has, I'm... Then I'll go with you. Thanks, Walton. But you better stay and mind the house. Yes, Miss. Tell Strelick to bring the horses round to the front. Yes, Miss. And get me Oliver's revolver. Yes, Miss. Helga, please don't go out tonight. Don't worry, Mrs. Walton. I'm sure there's some rational explanation for all this, but if there is anything out there tonight, I'd like to get a crack at it, and I'm a jolly good shot. I'll drive them, Stradick. Get in. But Miss Elga. Come on, Alex. Good boy, Alex. Maybe you can help. Get in the back. <laughs> I'm here somewhere, I'm sure. Miss Elder, won't you please go back? Give me a lantern. Yes, miss. Let me have the lantern. I'll go ahead. down here. Twisted and his iron legs have been. Miss Elgin, now won't you go back? Not until I find my brother. And they're like an owl. Go and get some brandy. Yes, ma'am. Hello, Helga. How did I get into bed? I found you in the lane on the cliff and brought you home. In the lane? But how did... I don't even... Yes, I do remember. 
I was fighting the... The beast got Kate. Is she... She's still unconscious. We've done what we could for her. Must have gone for her after I fought it off. What... What was it, Oliver? I, I don't know. I didn't see anything. Well, Oliver, I'm glad to see you awake and talking. That's a good sign. How's Kate? Still in a coma. She may or may not come out of it. But there is a chance. Microscopic, but thanks to your quick action, still a chance. Well, you're a pretty good nurse, Helga. There's nothing left for me to do but uh, a bit of tidying up. Hmm. Now, tell me, what happened exactly? I don't know exactly, Jeff. As I was leaving your house, I, I saw a glimmer of light on the pathway leading up to the cliff. So I went to investigate. I thought perhaps it might be somebody setting traps. You know, the clag pools. But it was Kate O'Malley. She left a few minutes before I did, you remember. I offered to see her to the village, and... And suddenly I... I felt something coming at us from all sides at once. We heard it. Kate screamed and dropped the lantern. And I... And it, it, it closed in on me like... Like a blast from a furnace. And it, it wasn't hot, it... It was... Simply horrible. Kate screamed again, and then I was fighting it. Fighting it in a, in a darkness that, that went all, all red. All dark red, and, until a, a, a splash of fire split it up and put it out. That must have been when I, when I pitched on my head. And I woke in the, in the light and saw Helga. You poor darling. Helga, you're next. You're the only Hammond left besides me. If I die... Now, wait a minute, old chap. Who said anything about dying? The monster's never satisfied, Jeff. Unless it kills its victim or... Now, steady, Oliver. You mustn't excite yourself. You needn't talk as though I were a scared kid or a lunatic. I tell you, there's something horrible out there. Unless we destroy it, it'll destroy us. Both of us. Please try to put it out of your mind now, darling. Get some sleep. Here, drink this. Make you feel better. Poor darling. It must have been a shock for you, finding them like that. It was awful. I can't help feeling that I'm somehow to blame, about Kate at least. She'd been working late and I should have seen her home, I suppose. But it's hardly a stone's throw to the village through the shortcut past your place. Jeff! There's something beyond all this that, that frightens me. What is it? What is this thing that's been hanging over us for years? The village folk will insist that the Hammond monster has returned. But you don't believe in that superstitious rot, do you? Usually some basis for this sort of thing. How badly is Oliver hurt? His wounds are deep, but not serious. Fortunately, he's got excellent recuperative powers. What about his mind? Seems unaffected. Most anybody might be liable to forget exactly what happened after a blow like that on the head. Haven't you any idea what sort of a creature made the wounds? Oliver and Kate are badly mauled, but there's no distinctive mark to indicate exactly what attacked them. It could have been a ferocious dog, of course. But those poachers have a couple of huge vicious hounds. Now, look here, darling. Why don't you forget about this tonight and try to get some sleep? I'll run along. I'm sure by tomorrow the police will find out what it was.
I've done it, Bob. It works. Really? This must be our lucky day. These tests turn out well, too. My dear boy, all London knows that you solved the Kensington murder with your scientific test when everything else had failed, but nobody's been able to do what I've done. And what complicated formula, Christy, have you proved? Here, taste it. Oh, no, thanks. Oh, it won't hurt you. Oh, hello, Inspector. Uh -huh. I was about to come up and see you. We collated the final runoff tests on those bullets. They were all fired from the same revolver. Inspector Craig, have a piece. What is it? Toffee, a new recipe. Don't tell me that you've been using our laboratory equipment to make toffee. Don't mind if I do. Don't touch it. Mr. Curtis, you may not think much of female detectives, but really, it's simply delicious. The best I've ever made. Your pan... You use that pan? Well, why not? If making toffee isn't scientific. But that's the pan that I use for the hydrophobia culture, and it turned out positive. Hydrophobia... Hydrophobia... Oh! Oh! <laughs> That'll fix her. Here, Inspector, help yourself. No, thank you. She'll have her stomach pumped. It serves her right. She's a good detective, but she gets restless unless something's happening that makes her blood run cold. You know, her prime passion is dabbling in the occult. Maybe the Hammond case would interest her. What's up, Inspector? Nothing tangible yet, but I'd appreciate it if you'd look into it. You might solve something there with these gadgets of yours that's baffled us for a long time. If those are orders, Inspector, I'm ready. Christy and I could do with a weekend in the country. I think it'll take longer than a weekend. And it might turn out to be rather dangerous. Well, if you're thinking about Christy, don't worry. She thrives on goose pimples. Don't laugh at me, Bob. But I sometimes think that there are some things that can't be explained in the ordinary way. And I want to warn you. You'll best be prepared to cope with something perhaps supernatural. <laughs> oh, but Inspector Craig... I know what you're going to say. There's no such thing that from the viewpoint of science, all phenomena have a material basis. I've never yet met a case of ghostly interference that wouldn't stand investigation. That's why you're the man for the job. Miss Hammond is waiting in your office, sir. Coming. Here, read the report of the case and then come up. I want you and Christy to look the Hammond girl over. Right. And that's all there was to it, Inspector. Yes, yes, of course. You must forgive me for asking you up to London. Naturally, but there's nothing more I can add that you don't already know. You're sure there's nothing else you want to tell me? Ah, oh, may I present Mr. Robert Curtis, chief of our laboratory staff, and his assistant, Miss Cornelia Christopher. This is Miss Hammond. How do you do? How do you, do? you don't look like the sort of girl who'd be mixed up in any trouble like this. He said precisely the same thing to Miss Coulter, the sashweight murderess, before he sent her to the gallows. Christy! Oh, I'm sorry, my dear. I didn't mean to shock you. That's just my clumsy way of assuring you that we'll find the murderer. But there's been no murder. No murder? Then what am I doing here? My dear Miss Christopher, the Hammond case has been in our files for a long time. I knew your grandfather well. He was a brave and gallant soldier. I hardly remember him. I was only a child when he... Yes, yes, I know, my dear. It's always been hard for me to believe that such a fine man could kill himself. Unless he had a very good reason. Miss Hammond, Scotland Yard has no desire to pry into people's private lives. But we'd hope that you'd tell us about the, well, the monster. A monster? Now we're getting somewhere. There's no such thing. But there is a legend. Yes. To the effect that centuries ago, one of your ancestors sold his soul to the devil and still lives in a secret room in Hammond Hall, issuing forth at intervals to make the sacrifice of a human life in order to prolong his own. I didn't think you knew the story. I'm sorry, Miss Hammond, to have to bring a matter which I know must be painful to you out into the open. But we've but done nothing to merit having our name dragged through a newspaper scandal. We'll keep the investigation strictly undercover. Then there is to be an investigation. I'm afraid there's nothing we can do about it. That's official. Very well, then. I'll help you all I can. Oh, that's odd. We were thinking we were going to help you. Thank you, but I'm sure I can take care of myself. When should we expect you? Oh, but we're moving in with you. And I warn you, I've got an appetite like a horse. What a divinely gloomy old house. Just the sort of place a reliable ghost would haunt. It's one of the oldest inhabited houses in England. We're coming to the shortcut. Shall we stop? Right. I'd like to have a preliminary look around. Come along, Christy? No, if you don't mind. It's much too early in the day to tax my poor brain. 
be a dear and run me up to the hall, will you? Delighted. Do you think it's wise Helga to go down there? After last night, I mean. Oh, don't worry. When Bobby gets on the trail of a ghost, its haunting days are practically over. Toodaloo. See you at lunch, if not before. Golly, I'm famished. I do hope that bloodthirsty spook hasn't raided the pantry. <laughs> Oliver! Hello, Helga. I say, old girl, don't look so startled. I'm all right. I woke before the scheduled time, and even Jeff had to admit there was no necessity for my staying in bed. Oh, I'm sorry. This is my brother, Oliver. Mr. Curtis from Scotland Yard. Glad to see you, Mr. Curtis. Oh, it's a bit late to do anything for poor Kate. She's... No, she's alive, but still in a coma. Even if we find the answer to this, it won't help her much, I'm afraid. I see the local police are already on the job. Yes, they just got here. Not even the constable would venture out in these parts until broad daylight. I tell you, it was those clad fools. No, no, Warren, we can't jump to conclusions. We haven't found any tracks, neither of them nor their dogs. Constable, this is Mr. Curtis. Oh, Mr. Curtis. I've been expecting you, sir. Well, I got your wire, sir. And now nothing's been disturbed. Interesting case you have here, Constable. I wouldn't exactly say that interesting's the word, sir. Well, what about those poachers, Constable? Well, it could have been them, of course. But... I'm afraid we're dealing with something more serious than a couple of poachers. Have you examined the spaniel? We have that, sir. No teeth marks or other clues as to the nature of what attacked him, I suppose? No, sir. Strange he didn't warn you of the approach of your assailant. I know it sounds fantastic, but is there a possibility he didn't see it? Well, even a supernatural being would have to take on material form in order to inflict such serious injuries. Well, I think perhaps we can find an explanation for all this without calling in spooks. Could you tear a dog that size to pieces, Constable? Well, perhaps not. Two men could between them. Or perhaps a large animal. Well, I might say yes, but nothing that size has passed through here lately. Now, anything big enough to do a thing like this would have to leave tracks. Oh, not necessarily. How about a big monkey? I suppose you've checked up to find out if one has escaped anywhere. There's no shows in the vicinity, sir. There's a zoo about eight miles from here. A monkey seems a likely notion. It's a possibility, of course. Shall I check up on it, sir? Can't do any harm. Right, sir. Who's that fellow in the velveteens? That's Warren, Kate's fiancé. They were to have been married. Poor fellow, is all broken up. You don't really believe that ape theory? No, but it'll give them something to play around with. Then they won't have time to worry about me. You have any theory at all? It's too early to form an opinion yet, but... we have to figure on something with almost superhuman strength. It tears with grasping paws and bites ferociously. Whose approach even a dog can't sense. Who comes and goes, heaven knows how, without leaving any tracks. Find anything? Nothing of any importance. Mr. Curtis and Miss Christopher will be stopping with us a few days, Walt. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, my dear, I do hope you will forgive me, but I prevail upon your butler to serve luncheon in here. So much cozier than that enormous, gloomy dining room. I'm glad you did. Far feels good after that fog. Miss Christopher, I want you to meet my brother, Oliver. How do you do, Miss Christopher? Why, you poor dear boy. What a ghastly experience that must have been for you last night. Oh, well, come and sit by me and tell me all about it. You know, I'm awfully rude, not waiting for you. But lunch will come as we once a day, and I thought it was a pity to spoil it. I could do with a couple of those pork sausages myself. I always make it a practice never to hunt down ghosts on an empty stomach. You know, my dear, ghosts don't like nice warm rooms. And there doesn't seem any point in tempting that spook of yours to buy a gin us while we're eating. Don't tell me you've already decided it's here in the house. Well, you can laugh if you want to. But there's something here. Something strange. Very strange. I can feel it. I should have warned you. Miss Christopher suffers from an overdeveloped supercalifagellus. A supercola what? Feminine instinct. Ah! Good gracious! What was that? Door slamming, I imagine. Wind's come up. I thought I heard someone scream. It's probably Millie, the new maid. Her hair's been standing on end ever since last night. Maybe you better go and see Mrs. Walton. Yes, miss. Millie! Oh! What's the matter with you? The monster! It's here in the house! Are you out of your mind? I tell you, it's here in there. It slammed the door right in my face. Be quiet, you don't know what you're saying. There's nothing in there. Mr. Oliver didn't see nothing last night either. I tell you, there's something in there, even if the rain. Oh. What was that? I don't know. 
Whoever was that? Clanking James. What did I tell you? Seems to be coming from the direction of the crypt. There's a crypt in the house? Yes, down in the cellar. Sir Magnus is buried there. Let's have a look around. Splendid. Maybe we'll catch the ghost for the shroud down. seems to be resting in peace. By daylight, at least. Who's the crusader? Sir Reginald Hammond. He lived in King Richard's time. Was killed in Palestine. Is that supposed to be the monster? I told you there isn't any monster. If that's a lapdog, I'm a canary bird. Do you make anything of it? It might be meant for anything on four feet. People have always bred the dog into fantastic shapes. But that's no canine tail and those round paws. Hmm, it's rather curious. Who's this beautiful specimen of manhood? Sir Oliver. Now, well, why would such a handsome man want to kill himself? It's a sort of junior Westminster Abbey, isn't it? Yes, Miss Christopher. It's been the family burying place for 500 years. Oh, Miss Hammond. You admitted that there was a legend in the family. Why not trot it out so we can all have a look at it? I've told you everything I know. Well, you didn't tell us about all these ancestors of yours who were killed by this so-called monster, or who killed themselves after meeting it. Why do you insist on hiding? Now, look here, old man. Is there by any chance a reason why you don't want this brought out in the open, Dr. Colbert? Certainly not. I'm only thinking of Helga. She's had enough to worry her since the other night, and I see no point in upsetting her unnecessarily. It's all right, Jeff. I'm sorry, Miss Hammond. I don't mean to distress you, exactly but... Exactly what is it you want to know, Mr. Curtis? Well, for one thing, what about this chap who sold his soul to the devil and is said to live in the secret room? That's nonsense. There is a secret room but in the cellar. But there's nothing in it. How do you know? I've been in it. Lately? I say, Curtis, this isn't a court of law, you know. The room's been untouched for centuries. We finally locked it up several years ago. Mind if I have a look at it? Not at all. The key right here. Come along. Coming, Curtis? Right. They're going to the secret room. That Christopher woman suspects something. They won't find anything. We shall see to it that they don't. Shh! Would you add another crime to all the others? There are some things it's better not to know about. What are you doing here? You rascal, you scared us. <laughs> Wait a minute. There's someone here. Someone besides us. Barton, what are you doing here? I beg your pardon, sir. I didn't mean to startle you. I was on my way to the cellar to get some wine for dinner. I wish you'd stop sneaking up on people like that. Can't you cough or sneeze or do something, let a person know you're about? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. It's just an excuse to keep an eye on me. Probably expects me to go out and hang myself at any moment. Oliver! Don't worry, darling. I'm much too fond of this old earth. Creepy sort of a chap, that Walton. He may seem odd to you, but he's really a very kind, fatherly person. Has he been with the family long? Oh, ever since I can remember. He seems to have something on his mind. It's here. Uh-oh. There goes that old supercalifragilis again. Be quiet. Don't move. There's something in the air. Something out of the ordinary. 
something very strange. Nonsense. It's no ghost. Or the dog would have noticed. Your dog didn't notice anything last night either, did he? That's right. Hmm, that's odd. I'd say that it rather neatly disposes of the supernatural. It does, Doctor? I'd say so. Well, that seems to settle it. When stars are bright on a frosty night, beware thy bane in the rocky lane. Oh, pretty little ditty. Someone ought to set it to music. Sounds like a pretty definite warning to me. Yet you ignored it last night. To tell you the truth, I never took it very seriously. Seems rather like flying in the face of fate in view of what happened to your ancestors. Superstitious rot. Uh, superstitions are often based on fact. If you want to know more about it, there's a family history in the library. Thanks, I'll have a look at it. How long did you say it was since anyone has been in this room? Three or four years, at least. You're sure? Well, I have the only key. And you haven't been here recently? Well, not since Helga and I came here about three years ago, and... When what? We decided to lock up the room for good. Why? For the simple reason we never used it. I see, and you haven't been here since. Frankly, Mr. Curtis, I don't see the necessity for this cross-examining. If Helga and Oliver say that... Somebody's been in this room within the last 24 hours. Those are pretty hefty footprints for a ghost. I told you there wasn't a ghost. Anybody could have made them. Why, they could be mine if I'd had a key to get in here. Well, let's see if they fit, eh? Oh, I say, I am a clumsy ox. Unfortunate, Doctor, that you had to pick this particular moment in which to lose your balance. Well, the last time I lost mine, I had one too many. Well, I'm terribly sorry, old man. Why don't you send this fellow Curtis packing? One doesn't send a Scotland Yard man packing, Jeff. You needn't submit to this sort of thing, you know, this cross-examination. We still have laws that protect a person's privacy. You don't like him, do you? I'm afraid I don't. Look, Jeff, you deliberately smeared those footprints. Why did you do that? Don't you realize they might have been anybody's? Mine, Walton's, Oliver's? Why should we let this detective involve innocent people in an investigation that's entirely uncalled for? Mr. Curtis is trying to help us. And if we can help him, we... Oh, Miss Hammond! I'll run upstairs. I want to look in on Kate. He's pretty fond of you, isn't he? Dr. Kovitz, one of my best friends. That undoubtedly accounts for his aversion to me. Do you always analyze everything, Mr. Curtis? Miss Hammond, if your brother were killed last night, you'd have become sole heir to the estate, wouldn't you? Well, I suppose so. Why? Then someone who knew this legend of the monster might have used it to get rid of your brother. I'm afraid I don't follow you. With Oliver out of the way, your husband, if you had one, would control the estate. You mean Jeff? That's absurd. Perhaps. But why should a man of his ability bury himself way up here in this little village, instead of practicing in London where he belongs? Maybe you better ask him that. Oh, Doctor. Hmm? I wanted to get that book Mr. Hammond mentioned. Do you happen to know where it is? Why, yes, in this bookcase, I believe. Hmm, that's curious. Used to be right here. I've seen it often. Looks like somebody else is interested in the history of the Hammond family, eh? I may be mistaken. I thought it was there. Perhaps you better look around. Or perhaps that's just one more thing I'm not supposed to know about. I remember now. You practiced in London a couple of years ago. Specialized in nervous diseases. Yes, that's it. You're a brain specialist. I've had some little success in that line, yes. Why did you leave London? Now, look here, I resent your attitude. My affairs happen to be my own business. And I'll thank you to bear that in mind. Sorry, Doctor. But whether you believe it or not, I'm trying to help Miss Hammond and her brother. And I have a feeling they'll need help. The best way you can help them is to go back to London. Doctor Covert, I'll make a deal with you. You tell me frankly what you know about all this, and I'll drop out. I'm sorry, I can't do that. Have you any objection to telling me where you were last night? I was in my laboratory. I see. I talked with Helga on the telephone not two minutes before. That's true, Mr. Curtis. Are you positive it was only two minutes, Miss Hammond? Things happened pretty thick and fast about that time, you know. You could have miscalculated. Walton was right in the room with me. He'll verify it. I expect he would. Dr. Cover, Dr. Cover, come quick. It's Miss Kate. Carol's dying? I'm afraid so, sir. Mr. Curtis, 
There's one thing I feel you ought to know. Yes? The other night, Mr. Oliver and Miss Kate were mauled and scratched as if by some wild beast. But that wasn't everything. Go on. You know that Miss Kate hasn't come out of it. But she isn't just unconscious. It's as if she was, well, paralyzed. Or drunk. Did Dr. Cobra tell you this? No. I could tell by the look of her. I know about such things. But if you don't mind, sir, Ralph, you didn't tell me one. I won't unless I have to, Mrs. Walton. And thanks. From all I can gather about this wretched spook, you're not going to find it under that glass. I'm not sure this wretched spook, as you call it, was responsible for what happened. Neither am I. What about that doctor? He smeared up those footprints deliberately, didn't he? Don't tell me you had to rely on your feminine instinct to arrive at that brilliant conclusion. Mm, he knows more about all this than he's telling. That's the trouble they all do. The girl, too? All of them. Oh, dear, and here at last I thought you were casting sheep's eyes at a pretty girl. Well, that doesn't prevent me from knowing she's hiding something. Whatever can it be? I've got an idea, but I need proof. Would this interest you? I don't know. Looks like a tuft of hair. The dogs? I don't think so. It's too coarse. But what do you make of this? Oh, it looks like a scrap torn from a muffler. That's what I made of it. Who's do you suppose? That my pet is for you to find out. Do you mean to say that I've got to steal every woolen scarf in the neighborhood? And without anyone catching you at it. A fine detective you're making me. Turning me into the thief. Good work, Walton. I wasn't aware that you were being watched. You did a very thorough job, Walton. You needn't look so guilty, you know. You'd make a very poor accomplice. Accomplice? Come now, out of it. What were you burning? Waste paper. We always burn it. In this room? Uh-uh, that won't do. You went out of your way to burn something that you wanted to get rid of. You chose this room because you thought you wouldn't be seen. Yes. It wasn't waste paper at all, was it, Walton? No, sir. It was something you didn't want me to find because you thought it might incriminate you. That's not true, sir. It was... I'm sorry, sir, but I can't say it. You realize this puts you in a very serious position. Walton, I'm sure that you've given long years of service to the Hammonds. I know that you'd do anything in the world to help them. Why won't you let me help them? Mr. Curtis, leave Hammond Hall. Go back to London. Before it's too late. Too late? What are you keeping from me? There are some things that are beyond the understanding of us who live on this earth. You are not safe here. Miss Christopher's in danger, too. Won't you go back? I'm sorry, Walton, but we've a job to do here, and I mean to see it through. Very good, sir. No one can say I didn't warn you.
Don't tell me you're doubling for the monster. Well, I don't know anything about the monster. You surely didn't come here to say your prayers. I don't see as it's any of your business. You and Walton happen to be the only two members of the household beside Miss Hammond who were up and above when the attack occurred. Mr. Curtis, I don't know anything about the monster. I swear I don't. You better tell me what you're up to, Freddick. Oh, so that's what those ghost chains are all about. I tell you, it ain't got nothing to do with the monster. But it does have something to do with your being in the forest last night. Is she? Yes, he's gone. The body will have to remain here till the police complete their investigation. We'd better tell the others. I did everything I could for her. She never regained consciousness. We'll have to make a report to the constable, Helga. There'll be an inquest, you know. Poor kid, why did it have to happen to her? I tried to save her from it. I battled with all my strength. I should have put up a better fight. You mustn't blame yourself, Oliver. I have the most awful premonition. I'm sure it will strike again. Let me advise the witnesses that they are under oath and that it is their duty to give the coroner's jury all facts pertaining to this case. Gentlemen of the jury, your verdict as to the cause of the death of the deceased, Kate O'Malley, is to decide the future course of action in this case by His Majesty's government. Your judgment will be guided by the testimony of the witnesses. And I wish to impress upon all witnesses that perjury in connection with an official coroner's inquest is punishable to the full extent of the law. In the event of the jury rendering a verdict of murder, any witness withholding vital information or giving false testimony will be regarded as an accessory to the crime. <clears throat> now, will you take the stand, please? Your name? Charlie Clagpool. The constable report states that you and your brother Tom were unlawfully setting traps when the fight in which you received a broken arm occurred. We was in the woods, all right. But we didn't kill Kate O'Malley. We was nowhere near her and Mr. Hammond. You've not been accused of that. Is it true that on several previous occasions you had words with Mr. Hammond? That's right. What about it? That will be all. Mr. Sturdy, take the stand. Yes, sir. Did you see the Clagpools on the night of the crime? I suppose I did. Can't you be sure whether you did or not? Yes, I'm sure. What were you doing in the woods at that time? I was setting traps. Stradick. Oh, that's impossible. I'm sorry, sir. I needed the money, I did. But why didn't you tell us? I couldn't. I'd been gambling. I had to cover my losses somehow. I hid the chains in the chapel. Oh, dear. There go my lovely ghost chains. As the attending physician, then, you would say the cause of death was due to precisely what? Concussion of the brain and severe hemorrhage. May I ask the witness a question? Of course, if the witness has no objection. None at all. Dr. Covert, were there any contributing circumstances other than those you just mentioned? I don't know exactly what you mean. The deceased was in a comatose condition all the time prior to her death? Yes, she never regained consciousness. Could this have been caused by anything else? Besides a blow in the head? From a medical viewpoint, that's possible, but hardly probable. My examination... I'm not questioning the competence of your examination, Doctor. I want to know if Kate O'Malley had been drugged. 
Definitely not. Thank you, Doctor. That's all I wanted to know. Have you reached a verdict, gentlemen? Yes, sir. It is the opinion of this coroner's jury that Kate O'Malley died of injuries sustained during an attack by a person or persons unknown, or by a large savage animal species unknown. There you are, Bob. That's the verdict that's always been given in these Hammond cases. What do you think? I think I'll be able to prove it's murder. Curtis, we can't touch the body. What body? Kate O'Malley's. Those villagers are a superstitious lot. They're convinced that there's something supernatural about it and they won't budge. But I've got to get a blood specimen. Kate O'Malley's parents have a legal right to refuse permission for an autopsy. But perhaps Dr. Covert... No, no, not a chance. He ascribed death to normal conditions. Well, maybe it was a blind alley anyway. However, here's something that will interest you. Will you draw those blinds? Yes. We traced down a bit of cloth to a missing scarf, Oliver Hammond's. I have a hunch that Walton destroyed it. Walton? What? That's what we're going to find out. Now, what did I do with that bit of cloth? Well, here it is. Oh, yes. First, we take a sample of the thread. Then we incinerate it, thus. Place it in this tube. Withdraw the air because the nitrogen and oxygen in air interferes with the desired light bands of the spectrum. Now we'll find out if this came from the same muffler that Walton destroyed. But if Walton destroyed... Science doesn't recognize total destruction. You can change the form of matter, but you can't actually destroy it. You see those thick groupings of lines at the left end? Mm -hmm. That indicates that the wool was dyed with one of the coal tar dyes of the Paramino complex. Do you mean it's an unusual sort of dye? Precisely. The phenylene dye is unstable and hard to handle. That's why its use is generally avoided. Actually, it's toxic, poisonous. Is that why you asked if that poor girl had been drugged? On the contrary, I'm positive this has no relationship with Kate O'Malley's condition. I'm only trying to prove that this bit of cloth was torn from Oliver's muffler. This contains a sample of a substance that Walton burned. Identical. Then it was Oliver's muffler that Walton burned. Yes. I've seen that look of yours before, young man. I'm willing to wager that you've about got your man. I'm not convinced it is a man. A woman? Animal, vegetable or mineral? It could have been. A wolf. Now listen. There have been no wolves running wild in England since the Middle Ages. That's what stops me. But what do you make of this? I found this during my first investigation at the scene of the crime. Obviously, the hair of a large animal. A dog, perhaps. All right. Get the spectrum slide of wolf's hair out of my case while I mount this. That shows the spectrum analysis of wolf's hair. And here's the one I found. It's incredible. Well, Inspector, that blows up your spook theory. What's happened? I don't know. It was sealed in this tube in vacuum. It just couldn't vanish in vacuum. Where's the rest of it? That's gone too. It was here a moment ago. It seemed to disappear when the light struck it. Perhaps there are still some things in this world that science hasn't found out about. Gone to bed, Walton. Oh, yes, sir. Some time ago. Mr. Curtis come back from London yet? Uh, not yet, sir. Uh, Miss Christopher said he would arrive on the late train. Oh.
It's another bitter cold night, sir. Yes. You're not going out, sir. Why not? There's frost on the ground. Nonsense, Walton. I'm only going down to see if the gate's locked. Oh, but, sir... Stop worrying, Walton. I shan't go near the rocks. I've no wish to precipitate another tragedy. Forgive me, old man, for breaking in this way. I had to make a blood test. There wasn't time to run down to my lab at Scotland Yard, so I took the liberty of availing myself of yours. Could have shot you. You could have, but you wouldn't. You're pretty sure of yourself, aren't you, Geddes? Sure enough of myself to know that the blood in this tube contains cobra venom extract. Really? That's interesting. Whose blood is it? Kate O'Malley's. What are you driving at? Quite a coincidence that this tube of yours should also contain cobra venom. And what can that prove? One of two things. Either you injected the cobra venom into Kate O'Malley's veins, or you deliberately withheld the information that venom was in the system at the coroner's inquest. There was no reason for mentioning it. it. Had no bearing on the case. She didn't die from the venom. But you did inject it into her veins. No. It could have gotten there through the scratches of whatever it was that clawed her. Possible. That's not only possible, but that's what happened. And you know what the monster is. Yes. You've known all along. Well, aren't you going to tell me? I can't. It's not my secret. Good heavens, man. There's been one murder. There's liable to be others. It came from the direction of Hammond Hall.
Lucas room. I thought you were the monster. Quick, I saw it. It's got Helga. What? Yes. Mr. Curtis, send for us. Too late, Doctor. God rest his soul. Amen. From a medical point of view, it was a rare case. You would hope to cure him, wasn't that it? I've been working on the theory that the shock of the cobra venom would eventually straighten out the dreadful kink in his brain. Which he had inherited from his ancestors. Precisely. Didn't he suspect that he was a victim of lycanthropy? No, no. In cases like this, the patient must never know. He thought he had a nervous affliction. In the Middle Ages, they called such men werewolves, didn't they? No, Christy. No, no, she's quite right. You could put that in the report. It was a form of mania that caused his victim to imagine, consciously or subconsciously, that he was a werewolf. That book telling the history of the family had a hint in it. Oh, so you were the one who stole it. <laughs> yes. yes, I'd hope to keep you from finding out. That their ancestors were balmy. 
Well, let us say, rather, that their ancestors handed it down from father to son throughout the ages. It appeared only in the men of the family, and only when the victim was out on a frosty night. They guarded the secret very carefully. But the butler knew about it. We know that now. That's why he burned Oliver's scarf. It had been torn to shreds by his dog. He was afraid we'd learn the truth, knowing that a faithful dog never attacks its own master. Oh. You know, Doctor, there were times when we were about to put the handcuffs on you. Yes. Yes, I had to take that risk. Well, I'll be running along now to see how Helga is. You have all the information you need? Thank you, Doctor. My report is complete. Goodbye. 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 Why the fellow? Oh, my goodness. Now what? I just happened to think. I was sleeping in the next room the night that wolfman grabbed his sister. What if he grabbed me? Don't worry, Christy. Wolves will never bother you. Show starts in ten minutes. So nutritious. It's a taste delight. It's so munchy. Crisp and crunchy. You'll enjoy each bite. Eat butter drenched buttercup. Popcorn at its best. Served in a king size cup. It beats all the rest. Show starts in nine minutes. Here's a new taste treat the corn dog. Plump, juicy wieners are dipped in a thick, golden, southern-style corn batter that seals in all their freshness and flavor. If you like hot dogs, you love corn dogs. Everybody does. Try a corn dog with your favorite beverage. At the refreshment corner now. Corn dogs. Show starts in eight minutes. Today we're interviewing a stomach. Hello there. What is life like as a stomach? Oh boy, it was humdrum. I mean, until what's his name discovered Tony's Pizza. Tony's Pizza? Yeah, I was suffering from the pizza cravings until Tony's came along. Crispy crust and zesty sauces. <laughs> wow. And so now. What's that? Another pizza craving. Just thinking about Tony sets it off. Oh, wh where are you going? He's going to get a Tony's pizza. And I follow him anyway. Does your stomach send you pizza craving signals? <laughs> oh, wow. Tony's, the pizza craver's pizza. Available at the concession stand. <laughs> Show starts in seven minutes. It's refreshment time, folks. Taste that beats the others cold. Pepsi pours it on. Taste that beats the others cold. Pepsi pours it on. Yum, yum. It's a meal in itself. Our all-meat super dog. Enjoy one now. Show starts in six minutes. 
Men, there's a drive-in movie full of juicy people. Wow! It, it's a trap! Uh, help! It's Pick! We've had it, men. Uh, uh. A pleasant aroma for you, but not for mosquitoes. Pick is easy to use. Light it and forget it. Pick's aroma keeps mosquitoes, gnats, and sandflies away. Pick is the best protection for barbecues, fishing and camping trips, or just relaxing in the yard. So if you don't want our company ever anywhere, just like Pick and see what I mean? Bye! Pick is on sale at the refreshment stand now. Show starts in five minutes. A cup of whipped hot chocolate tastes great right now. Carnation's Cocoa Supreme, the delicious hot chocolate drink with the light, delicate flavor you like. Wouldn't a good hot cup taste good right now? Ask for a cup of whipped hot chocolate at our snack bar. Show starts in four minutes. Yum, yum. It's time for a tasty and refreshing snack. Promise to satisfy your hunger, your thirst, your sweet tooth. So visit our refreshment center now. Let's go! Show starts in three minutes. Hot cold. And Ooh, hot dog. Hot Show starts in two minutes. You come with me along the milkshake way. I've got lots of good surprises, fresh and yummy for you every day. There are malts and shakes and Sundays too, whenever you stop. And of course, your very, very favorite, the cone with the curl on top. You don't have to just dream about Dairy Queen. Your favorite Dairy Queen treat is a refreshing reality at your nearest Dairy Queen store.
Show starts in one minute. Before our patrons, men, women, boys, girls, through the cooperation of leading business places, you may now have free admission to this theater. Ask for dividend tickets when you shop at... Names of merchants who give dividend tickets are listed in the lobby of the theater and on circulars at the concession stand. Dividend tickets will be accepted on all standard box office priced films. So take a circular with you today and start saving dividend tickets tomorrow when you shop. See your next movie completely free. And now, on with the show. than ever this evening. Mrs. Kessler first, Evans. Oh, yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Dad taking it? All right, Miss Virginia. They're having dinner. I'll answer it. Hello, Virginia. I told you not to come here this evening, Ralph. Why? Didn't you want to see me? Well, it, it isn't that I didn't want to see you. You're certainly acting strange, darling. What's all the mystery about? Let's go into the library. Ralph! After dinner, we are taking a long walk. I'd like to speak to you, Ralph. What's come over your father, Virginia? Is that why you didn't want me here tonight? Yes. It stopped me cold. I'm sorry if I accidentally stumbled on something you didn't want me to know. Well, it must seem weird to someone who's never seen it before. It happens once a year. You always appeared perfectly rational to me. Well, there's something I must tell you. It's about my mother. I don't understand. Well, it happened several years ago. 
My father and mother were apparently as happy as two people could be. He worshipped her. Another man. The usual best friend. It almost broke my father's heart. He seems reconciled, but he never forgets their wedding anniversary and celebrates it that way. Yes, he isn't the only one who resorts to make-believe, but it does give one an uncanny feeling. Well, it doesn't frighten me anymore. Now that you know... I love you. You wanted your coat, Miss Kessler. Oh, oh yes, thank you. I was going to take a drive. It's such a beautiful night. Come along? Yes, of course. Sure you don't mind going? No, no, I'd love it. We'll be back in an hour, Cecile. Yes, miss. That's a nice young man of Miss Virginia's. I guess so. If he wasn't, Miss Virginia wouldn't bother with him. Does she plan to marry him? I never discuss things that aren't my business. If you want to stay here, I suggest you don't be so curious. Well, just the same. I think this is a crazy house. Now, what about those murders? Jules here says there's been a lot of them. And nobody's ever been able to find out who did the killings. You talk too much, Jules. But I only said that... Uh, excuse me, Mr. Seal. Come, I'll show you where we keep our linens. Oh, Mrs. Kessler, I brought you your dinner. Oh, please, Mrs. Kessler, I gotta go home. Oh, I wanna go home, too. Oh, but you are home. And as soon as you feel better, I'm going to take you to your husband and daughter. But they never write to me. Oh, but they don't know where you are, Mrs. Kessler. Nobody knows that but me. You see, I found I'm you. running away. We're running away in a car. We're going faster, faster, faster. We're gonna crash, we're gonna crash. I can't go home now. Can I? Mrs. Kessler, please. Please eat your dinner. I've got to go home. I'll be back in the morning. Good night, Mrs. Kessler. Good night. You're late again, Jules. I'm sorry, Mama. But I just couldn't get away from her. <laughs> Jules, why don't you tell Mr. Kessler about his wife, that you're hiding her? Oh, I haven't got the heart, Mama. It would kill him if he saw her the way she is. Poor thing. She'd be better off if she died with that man when that car was wrecked. Uh, I guess so. Jules, I've been thinking. Maybe she had something to do with all these horrible murders. Oh, 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 she wouldn't hurt nobody. She's like a child. She's still dazed from the accident, you know. Amnesia. But she'll be better soon. Then I'll take her home. What if 
they found out I'd been hiding her, they might think I had something to do with the murder. Jules, you must tell Mr. Kessler. Oh, no, no, Mama. We must never tell anyone. Never. Sure you won't come in? No, thanks, darling. I think I'd better run along. <laughs> Good night, Ralph. Oh, Virginia, shall I put your car away? No, thanks. Evans will take care of it. All right. Night. Good evening, Miss Virginia. Would you please put my car in the garage when you have a moment? Yes, miss. Casanova. Have you gone crazy? The only chance I had to see you. You ignored my letters and my telephone calls. Did you think that you could get rid of me as easy as all that? Be quiet. They'll hear you. You bet they will. And you're going to listen to me, too. I'm not giving up to that Kessler girl or anybody else. But this is different, Cecile. I never said I loved you. Are you in love with her? Yes. Well, you're not marrying her, understand? Nothing's going to stand in the way of my happiness. Not even you. Don't threaten me. She'll have to know about us sooner or later. And besides, I'll make you a good wife, Ralph. I promise I will. Guess what? What? I'm in love. Ralph? Yes, Dad? He's a fine boy. I'm so happy for you, my dear. Oh, he hasn't asked me to marry him yet, but he will. I know he will. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, my pet. Good night, sweet. Good night, Evans. Uh, good night, Miss Virginia. Uh, can I do anything for you, sir, before I retire? What happened to your hand, Evans? Oh, nothing, sir. I heard it when I was putting Miss Virginia's car in the garage. Put anything on it? Oh, the bandage. Oh, you may get an infection. How's that? Just like new, sir. I guess I'll eat for a while. Good night, Evans. Good night, sir. Oh, yes, Evans, sir. Thank you for the dinner. Yes, sir. I'm afraid to come home. You'd kill me. You'd kill anybody.
To see you. If it's exercise you want, there's plenty of it in the kitchen. She was taking her exercises. Call the police. I'll see what I can do. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Kessler, we're up to our ears in another one. The girl was killed the same way as the chauffeur six months ago. The only thing we could find was this note left by some fellow who wanted to give her the air. It's terrible, Lieutenant. She was so young. If we could find out who killed Cecile, we have the one who committed all the other murders. That's easier said than done. There's never been fingerprints, to say nothing of motives. What gets me, Mr. Kessler, is why you refuse to move out of this place. Sentimental reasons. There's nothing very sentimental about a house where anything could happen and usually does. My mother lived here, Lieutenant. Oh, I see. You're the gardener? Yes, but, but I wasn't here. I went home early. You see, I live with my wife. All right, all right, all right. And please don't try to see me. Signed, Ralph. Ralph? You know him? Oh, I'm certain I don't. <laughs> well, the name startled me. I'm, I'm practically engaged to a uh, Ralph. Did you notice anything unusual last night, Evans? Well, 
Maybe I better not say. That's Harvard Evans. When I was putting the roaster in the garage, I saw Cecile talk to Mr. Dixon. That's Miss Virginia's wife. Go on. I didn't mean to listen, but they were talking loud. Then I heard him say that he never loved her. And she said she wasn't going to let him marry anyone else. And that made him real mad. And said nothing was going to stand between him and his happiness. Not even her. I knew Cecile a couple of years. She offered me the companionship I needed. Then I met you and fell in love for the first time. I love you too, Ralph. Surely you can account for your activities from the time you left our house until the next morning. No, Mr. Kessler. I had a lot to think about. I took a long ride into the country, didn't stop anywhere, and didn't see a soul I knew. Mm. It's most unfortunate. All I know is that I... I didn't kill her. There isn't any doubt about that in our minds. Don't worry, son. We do everything we possibly can. Order! Order in the courtroom. You saw Miss Ward tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Yes, I manage the apartments where Ralph Dixon lived. Miss Mannix came there often. As a matter of fact, I thought they were married. I went home early and helped my wife with the house cleaning. The coroner's testimony should convince you that the defendant had sufficient reason for wanting to be rid of the victim. It's the truth. Said he would let nothing stand in the way of his happiness. Not even her. doing everything we possibly can. Tomorrow we're going to see the governor. Oh, and I'm sure something can be done. But governor, the man is innocent. If you would only grant a stay of execution. If you knew him, you'd realize he couldn't possibly be a murderer. I'm sorry. I've gone over the facts in the case. And unless you can present some new evidence, there's nothing I can do. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yes? I see. It's all over. My name is Dixon. Yes, of course. I'd like to see Mr. Kessler. He's in there. I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, Ralph. It can't be. Apparently, my brother never told you about me. Come in. I've been in South America. I flew here at once. However, I'm afraid it's too late to do any good. So you're Ralph's brother? Oh, you about you, but I, 
I never expected such a striking resemblance. Sorry to have startled you. This is my daughter, Virginia. How do you do? Won't you join us? I've had my dinner, thanks, but uh, I would like to talk to you. Do I look pale? No. Huh? I feel pale. The buzz, Evans. What's the matter, you deep? Did he have a good attorney? Oh, one of the very best. He's handled all of Dad's legal affairs for years. Evans, Mr. Dixon will have coffee with us. Oh, I'm Ralph Dixon's brother. Well, you sure had me going for a minute. But you do look like poor Mr. Ralph. Uh, coffee. Yes, sir. I realize how incriminating circumstantial evidence can be, but it's never brought home to me like this before. We did everything we possibly could. You know that Ralph and my daughter were quite serious about each other. Yes, he told me in his last letter. Sit down. How long do you plan to stay in this country? Haven't decided yet, Mr. Kessler, but I would like to find out who killed that girl. Mm. It's something I would like to know, too. Please consider this your home while you're here. If there's anything I can do, don't hesitate. Oh, thank you. I see that your room is put in order. Are you sure I'm not troubling you? No, no, not at all. On the team for till I come back. Good night, Virginia. Good night, Paul. Good night, Dad. Come in. I hope you'll be comfortable. I sent for your luggage in the morning. It's awfully nice of you, Mr. Kessler. Really, I it's hope It's a that pleasure to have you. Thank you, Sam. Well, I guess I'll turn in. I haven't had much sleep the last couple of nights. Good night. Good night, Sam. Thank you. 
Give me the police department. No. The body has not been touched. Yes. All right. Good morning, Evans. Good morning, Mr. Kessler. Now, what's the matter? The gardener, sir. What? He's been murdered. Murdered? Triangle. Well, here we go again. How long do you work for you? Oh, about three years, I guess. Ever say anything to you about having any enemies? No, sir. Were you home last night? Yes, Lieutenant. To your knowledge, did anybody come in or go out of the house during the course of the evening? We have a house guest. Why isn't he here? I'll get him. Oh, don't trouble yourself, Mr. Kester. Where is he? He's upstairs in his bedroom. Let's have a look at him, Ryan. Good morning. You want it in the kitchen. In the kitchen? Yeah. Am I seeing things? He's Ralph's brother. Well, he's the image of him. How did this happen? That's what we'd like to find out. He was strangled, Paul. Would you mind if we go into the library? No, that's all right. Better wait here for the coroner, Ryan. Not you, Evans. Hey, where were you on the night of January the 13th? Have you had your coffee yet? No. Well, I guess that's that. No clues, no fingerprints, no motive, nothing. But surely if a man was choked to death, there would be imprints on his throat. Hmm. There weren't any on the Mannix, girl. Then they were killed the same way, is that right? That doesn't prove a thing, Dixon. All the others got it, and always the same way. The corner's here. Okay. I'll be right back. What does he mean by the others? Just that. Others have been killed here. Why in the world do you stay in this place? We can't leave. Uh, your luggage, sir. I I'll put them in your room. What about these other murders? I'll put your luggage in your room, sir. Oh, Lieutenant. Yeah? Uh, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Well, uh -huh. that'll be a change, anyhow. What's bothering you? As a rule, I'm not a very curious person, but... Oh, um, I was beginning to get you, huh? In a way, yes. What about these other murders? Well, there's been quite a lot of them, Dixon. Some of the best brains in the department have tried to solve them. But we always run up against a stone wall. Weren't the other murders brought out in my brother's trial? That was different. That was a cut and dried case. Why haven't the police closed the house? Oh, we tried to, but Mr. Kessler took it to court. Carries a lot of weight around here. He does a lot of good, too. You think he'd want to leave? Uh, I guess he's waiting for his wife to come back. She left him several years ago. An awful scandal at the time. Front page stuff and all that. Poor devil. He didn't have a chance. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll be running along. Glad I met you, Dixon. Good day, Lieutenant. Well, this isn't a very pleasant way to entertain a guest. 
You know, Mr. Kessler, I have a feeling that somehow or other these mysterious murders are going to be cleared up, and quickly, too. Nothing will please me more. Your wife? Yes. She's beautiful. I rarely talk about her, but I think about her constantly. She has eyes like Virginia. Her hair, her skin. They were the loveliest I've ever seen. I hope you have the pleasure of meeting her. She'll be back someday. Hello there. Paul was admiring your mother's picture. Father's a sentimentalist. He has every right to be. I'll get it. Hello? Yes? Just a moment, please. It's for you, Dad. Thank you. Yes? Yes, I guess I can. Yes. Oh, in about 20 minutes, I'd say. Surely. Goodbye. I'll see you children later. Business. Sorry. That's the only information I can give you, Mr. Kirby. Have you notified his wife? Yes, Mr. Kessler. Poor thing, she took it quite hard. It's terrible. Oh. I want to see the coroner. Yes? And Jules' wife. Where are they taking? In there, Mrs. Mason. May I have one moment alone with him? I won't ever see him again. Well, uh, yes, I guess so. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Mrs. Mason, Mrs. Mason. You'd better take her out, Mr. Kirby. He's alive. He's alive! I saw him move. I'll get the hospital. You'll be all right, Mrs. Mason. Steady now. Get him out of here! He's not dead! The doctor will be here any minute. Jules. Please, Mrs. Mason. Jules, listen to me. Did you recognize the man who tried to kill you? It was ghastly. I don't believe I was ever more startled in my life than when Mrs. Mason screamed. It must have been a terrific shock to see him come back to life. Yes, it was. Just a few moments longer, they would have known who the assailant was. I don't like to bring up the subject, Mr. Kessler, but these murders, did they ever happen in the daytime? No, I don't believe so. I see. You evidently have some reason for asking. Uh, not particularly. I was just curious about that one point. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry dinner is late tonight, sir. But the new cook is having quite a time getting started. That's all right. Evans been with you long? Over some years. Everything's gone wrong today. Now I've burned the roast. Oh, don't get so flustered. You'll be all right. I was so anxious to make good, I want to say. How is that mixing spoon? Here it is. Right in front of you. Thanks. I like it here. It's nice. Everything's so quiet and peaceful, like. Ever read the newspapers? No. They're just full of trash and murders and stuff. Mm -hmm. What you don't know, well, it's all right. Here, here's your pepper salt. Well, Paul, I'm afraid you have me cornered. 
You still have a couple of moves, Mr. Kessler. You've met your equal, Dad. Oh, your father just got himself into a bad position. Hmm. You're going to be very strong. It's your game, Paul. Want to play another? No, oh, thank you. Not tonight. It's getting late. Pardon me, sir. Yes? Well, may I speak to you a moment, please? Oh, yes, certainly. Uh, the cook wants to leave. I thought you should know. Why? She just came. She feels if her work is unsatisfactory. She has so much trouble with dinner tonight. Why, that's ridiculous. Oh, I understand. It's her first day. I'll speak to her. I'll say good night, Mr. Kessler. Think I'll turn in. Thanks for the game. Good night, Paul. Good night, Dad. Good night, child. I'll walk up with you, Paul. Oh, glad to have your company. It's a long, lonesome climb up those stairs all alone. Where are you going, Marie? You can't leave us after cooking such an elegant dinner. Did you really like it, Mr. Kessler? Why, I never tasted anything to equal that roast beef. Besides, you can't go now. It's going to rain in a minute. Are you sure you want me to stay? Oh, certainly, Marie. Well, I like it here, but I thought... Oh, then it is settled. Oh, wait till you taste my apple pie, Mr. Kessler. Apple pie? Mm -hmm. My, that will be a treat. <laughs> oh, let me take this. You, you might as well unpack your things, yes, Marie. Yes, sure. Thank you, sir. Not at all, Marie. Good night. Good night, Mr. Kessler. Oh, he's a wonderful man. Now, let's see. What did I do wrong?
And Mr. Kessler? Mr. Kessler, are you ill? What? Something wrong? Hello, Paul. I must have walked in my sleep. Well, you did better than I. I couldn't sleep at all. It's raining. Why don't you go to bed, Paul? I'm all right. Is there anything I can do? Nothing, Paul. Thank you. I think I'll read for a while. Good night. Good night, Mr. Kessler. Like you had a good night's sleep, Mr. Kessler. I was so tired when I got to bed, I don't even remember climbing in. Dad! Who would do a thing like that? I wonder if anyone was hurt. Nothing could have hurt my father more. It's unquestionably the work of a madman. Uh, you're right, Evans. Uh, yes, sir, Mrs. Kessler. Good morning, sir. Where is the new cook? She says she'll go shopping first thing this morning. Have you looked in her room? No, sir. Something wrong, Mr. Kessler? There's a valise. She didn't leave. I'm not worried about that. When did she tell you she's going to the market? Last night before she went to bed. Do you think there's any connection between this and what has happened before? I don't know. Have you been through the rest of the house yet? No, sir. Good morning, Mr. Kessler. Oh, Marie. You have no idea how happy I am to see you. Thank you. I wonder why he was so glad to see me. Mr. Kessler thought you had been murdered. Oh, he's so sweet. I'm going to start to make that apple pie. Right. Murdered? I can't imagine who would do a thing like that. I'll get it. Good morning, Miss Kessler. Won't you come in? Thank you. That happened last night. Didn't it fall? No. Find me the person who did it and you've got your murderer. Nobody came into this house last night. Ryan and his boys were stationed outside. Lieutenant. Oh, Lieutenant.
It's rhyme. Then you didn't hear any noises during the night? No, but there's funny things going on around here. Meaning what? Well, this happened three times now. I put food on the sink, left the room. When I come back, it was gone. No. You ought to hire a detective to watch it. <laughs> That's what you get for being such an excellent cook. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, Lieutenant. Yeah? You got something? I don't know why. I... I found this in the picture. Anybody else know about it? No, I wanted to speak to you first. Okay. I'll see if I can match it. Keep the others downstairs. <laughs> Why not? I agree. <laughs> Is uh, this yours, Mr. Kessler? Yes. Why? I thought I'd seen it on you. Found it in Evans's room. Well, there's nothing strange about that. There wouldn't be, Mr. Kessler, but it so happens that a thread from this robe was found embedded in the picture. Surely you're not trying to accuse Evans. Oh, it's incredible. You're just trying to make a case. Well, somebody's been doing these killings. Ryan didn't die of heart failure. Don't forget that. When did you give Evans that robe, Mr. Kessler? I don't remember giving it to him at all. But naturally, when my things need mending, he just picks them up. I don't care how he got it. He had it and he used it on that picture. I'm going to talk to him. Uh, just a minute, Lieutenant. Yeah? If Evans is the man we want, it strikes me you've got to have more evidence. <laughs> now, everybody wants to be a detective. Oh, wait a minute. Perhaps Paul has some suggestion. All right, go ahead. What is it? Without doubt, the murderer is insane. The picture tells us that. I believe we should call in a psychiatrist. A psychiatrist. You still got the robe. But before Evans is accused, I'm definitely in favor of giving him a sanity test. What do you say, Lieutenant? Okay. Maybe I'd better take one myself. All we want to know is if the fellow's crazy. That's very easy to determine. Shall we make the examination here? If you don't mind, doctor. Please tell Evans I want to see him and then go up to your room. Go to my room? Is it possible, doctor, for a man to be normal, say, for two or three months at a time, then go completely insane for an hour or two? Yes, quite common. This should be most interesting. Now what? A fuse must have blown. I like the candles. Fuse burned out, Miss Virginia. Oh, thank you. My father wants to see you, Evans. He's in his room. Yes, miss. That'll have to do, gentlemen, until the lights are fixed. I'll be in my room, Evans. Yes, miss. Sorry, Mr. Kessler, but we ran out of fuses. I sent Marie over to the store to get some more, sir. That's all right, Evans. Sit down. Oh, pardon me, sir. Oh, go ahead, Evans. Sit down. We want to talk to you. All right, sit down. Do you want to speak to me, sir? This gentleman would like to ask you a few questions, Evans. Yes, sir. Do you know these men? Yes, sir. What's this gentleman's name? Mr. Kessler. Mr. Charles Kessler, sir. Would you say that Mr. Kessler is out of his mind? I, I don't understand you. Would you say that he is insane? No, sir.
young lady. What are you doing here? You can't take it. You can't take it. It's mine, I tell you. Okay, sister, it's yours. Leave me alone. I'm going home. Home to my husband. And my daughter. Of course you are, and we know where you live, too. You do? Sure. But I'm dead, you understand? I'm dead. Of course you are. I'll take you where you want to go. Now you just come with me, young lady. Tell me, Evans, do you think this man is crazy? Now, don't ask him that, Doc. I'm beginning to have doubts myself. Please, Lieutenant. Oh, all right, all right. Am I crazy? I don't think so. You don't think so? I know that woman. She's wicked. She can't go home. Yes. Yes, I know. She's bad. Now you come with me. There we are. Ever see this before? Yes, sir. What were you doing with it last night? I don't know what you're talking about, sir. Kill anybody. It's Kessler. Take her out quickly. You sit right there, and we'll see that you get home all right. What are you doing? Give me a hand, George. She's dead. What happened here? We've got the murderer. Evans. No, Mr. Kessler. You. I knew you'd come back. Nothing can part us now, my darling.
And now, folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night. Thank you.